All right, so thank you very much for listening to me this morning. Um, today I'm going to focus on, just like everybody else, storing, accessing and exposing research data at, at JCU. And storage, uh, we have quite a few different options that we make available to different researchers. So um, we have HPC. So um, all researchers can apply for an account on the HPC and, in, and depending upon what they want to do, um, they can use it for just storage or also for, for compute purposes. Um, JCU is very fortunate to be an RDSI regional node. So this gives us a um, two petabytes of, of disk storage that we have here. Like here. And um, access to the RDSI storage is available through an application process. And um, we tend to encourage people who want access to larger disk storage to apply for an RDS application. And the other storage we have is a system called Research Data, which is really, it's, it's a red box that's publicly exposed. And um, this one's designed for completed data sets. So that as there's a self-submission process that, or workflow that the users can go through, they, so they can um, complete their data. They can attach files with a total size of up to 50 megabytes. So this is typically things like um, Excel spreadsheets um, and zip files that we normally see. So I'll just move on to my next slide. I was, the other thing I was about to say is um, e-research e can also store files in, on a system that need to be kept private um, and we can expose them in different ways as well depending upon which system the users want to use. So for access, again, HPC um, standard access applies. Um, SSH, SCP, FTP, some of this um, is um, a bit challenging for some users. So we try and use other systems to make access to their storage easier. Um, and this is very helpful to us. Um, we have, we can, I guess for, for RDS storage, we can mount that on the HPC for processing or well, compute access. Um, we have quite a large number of users here at JCU who are making or are using Spera shares. So for those of you who don't know, this is um, web-based access um, to RDSI storage, and this is this can be for tens of terabytes of data if you wish. Um, this has been very helpful to some users in that if they're at a um, at a location where connectivity is poor. Um, Aspera Shares has been able to give them good throughput in terms of uploading their data and accessing it. There is also a functionality to provide a sync type um, functionality using Aspera, but as um, Christopher pointed out quite earlier, um, it's dependent upon you having the local storage available, especially with you, if you're dealing with many terabytes of data. Uh, Mediafax gives us lots of options. Uh, we're focusing on portals functionality for MediaFlux, and we're currently working with Architecta on improving this. So it's a way that we can quickly create a, a mini portal to expose research data and to have um, access restrictions on that. And we can also um, create virtual machines um, to expose research data via different um, different websites, if, if the, depending upon the projects or the requirements of the user. Oops, and, and as I said, the other one, the other option is um, I mentioned earlier is research data where we can attach the 50 megs or up to 50 megs uh, exposure. So this is where we tie it all, all together. And mostly at JCU, uh, the system for exposing it is is a, is research data, which is our Redbox instance. Uh, so it's probably available, and um, there's a feed that happens once a week where ANS harvest the records for Research Data Australia. There's another system called the JCU Research Portfolio that is used and um, records from uh, research data are, have, are um, displayed under a tab on um, Research Portfolio. And um, this is to provide information about JCU researchers but also to see um, what sort of research data is available from those researchers. And, um, the information in the research portfolio is built using um, the JCU research management system. So maybe I'd just like to give a, a bit of a quick demo if I can switch to my web browser. Sorry. 
So just to try and show how it all ties in, here's our publicly facing uh, Redbox instance. So uh, I've pre-searched for a record that I know has got some links to data. So we're just reliant on the researchers adding URLs to explain to expose where the data may be. And um, in this example here, there's a, a public link to where the actual publication has been made, but the data is stored with that publication. And also here, there's a link to um, Inside eResearch, which is, and actually this data sitting on our um, HPC, so the user can then download the zip files. And again, if there's something similar for data on uh, RDSI, we can expose that data using a similar method. So if we, I will show you just jcu.me. So this is the research portfolio. So if you go to jcu.me, it redirects to here. So you can search for a researcher. So um, we can go just use Jeremy Vanderwell, who has lots of records. And um, if, as I said, if they have any data in our in our red box system or research data, this tab will be generated, and you can um, select the records from in here. So what we can do is then click on the record. It's very, this, I am live, so let's have a look. Here we go. So this is just a um, just a listing of the information you would see in Redbox. And if you wanted to, you can go off to the actual Redbox. Actually, this is a this is the actual data. So here's a, just a directory listing of the data that you can download. As we've probably all seen this before, but um, here are just the records that Jeremy has in um, Research Data Australia. I'll just pick. Um, Let's say some of his bird information. So we can click on data provider. So same links, similar type links. 